So every time this year, um, I experience this time of year, not as the fall, but as allergy seasons. And so by Sunday night's Mass, I'm, I've lost my voice, uh, and so I'm going to try to save it a little bit. I'm going to talk a little quiet, so lean in, and uh, I'll probably give a short homily. So I got something left to give by the end of it all. I have all the Masses this week. Uh, but this is a, a beautiful uh, lesson in the sense of uh, it really teaches us who we are and how to live in our world and what kind of faith God calls us uh, to live by. I, when I was uh, in seminary, I went to a church and um, I was a new convert and one of the con confirmation kids, what's that make him, about 13 years old, he was always one of the best kids in religious ed and, and even in youth group. He was like the leader of everyone. He had the most faith of all. And he wanted to not get confirmed because he didn't believe anymore. And, uh, and the person in charge of confirmation came to me and said, Steve, you got to talk to him. Uh, he's like the best kid ever and he doesn't even want to be confirmed anymore. He doesn't even have faith anymore. And so I, of course, being a young seminarian, tried all the great arguments that I had uh, to bring him back in, on board. And none of them worked, just nothing at all worked at all. And so finally, I said something to him that is totally inappropriate for a 13-year-old kid. It's more appropriate for someone my age, or at least 40 years old, uh, where, where our life changes, you know. It's... Um, it's this idea where God takes everything away from us uh, so that it can just be us and God. And John of the Cross really lives this out the best. And uh, he got rid of, just emptied himself of everything, all his wants, all his theology, all his religious practices, all his memories, everything. He just totally emptied himself. And then he said, when my house was all dark, I snuck out and I was with Jesus, the love of my life. And we had this incredible encounter uh, that was beyond everything else. And of course, John of the Cross is really all about faith. And to him, that's real faith. To get to the real God, he had to give up everything in this world that passes away so he could find God who lasts forever. Because to talk about this God who is real, you have to use words. And words are just symbols of ideas that are in our brain. And so uh, when Thomas Aquinas uh, encountered this same God that John of the Cross encountered, he said, oh my gosh, the God I just encountered was nothing at all like the God I've written about all these years. And Thomas Aquinas is the angelic doctor. He's like the smartest saint in the Catholic Church. And he said, everything I wrote about God wasn't true of the God I met because I was using words. And the words don't fit God. And so uh, Aquinas, or, or uh, Augustine says the same thing. He says, I'm writing this book on the Holy Trinity because all the heretics are writing about God and uh, they're all wrong. So I want to write this book, but I got to tell you, nothing I'm saying in this book is true. It's close. It points to truth. It kind of is like a metaphor or an analogy of truth, but it's, I, you won't get God out of this book. You'll get, you'll get directed to God. You'll get really good ideas that will help you encounter this God. And so I said to this 13-year-old boy, what I would normally say to someone at least over 40 years old, I said, maybe you didn't lose your faith. Maybe you're losing all the stuff of this world and all the religious practices in this world. And maybe God's calling you deeper. God wants you to go deep within and meet God there. I didn't believe a word I was saying. And the kid looked at me like I was uh, a genius. And he said, that's it. That's exactly what's going on in my life. I couldn't put words to it. And so 
It's not the amount of faith you have. It's not how much theology you know. It's not how many rosaries you do. And this is rosary or pro-life Sunday, so we're going to pray a lot of rosaries. They're great. Don't hear me wrong. Theology, bad theology is horrible. It'll ruin your life. So good theology is important, and rosaries are important, and all our religious practices are important. But there is a God who's so real that he's beyond everything we can imagine in this life. When we get there, we're going to go, wow. Our, our religion is going to get us there. Our faith is going to get us there. But when we meet that God, we're going to go, wow. This is way better and way different than I, I ever imagined. This is so, so amazing. So we're going to meet that God. And I want you to think about that God because that God has nothing to do with all the tough things that are going on in our world or have ever gone on in our world, that God calls us to be uh, powerful, powerful faith people that can be the soul of our world. We can be the life of our world. We can be what transforms our world. We can be that force in our world that the early Christians were. Uh, Jesus never took any political Sides. He didn't say, well, I kind of like the Sadducees better than the Pharisees, or I kind of like, you know, the, the zealots more than I like the Romans who are oppressing us. He never talked about anything, but he lived in such a way that he transformed the zealots and the Romans. He transformed the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He transformed the rich and the poor alike. He transformed everyone, and then the early Christians were the same way. Uh, They didn't even care about the things of the world. They cared about the people in the world. They cared about the souls in the world. And they lived their lives completely just um, with no interest. What's the word? Uh, they They just detached from all the things, all the troubles that were going on in the world. And they lived in such a way and preached in such a way that all the people in the world says, I want what you have. You have what I've been looking for my whole life. Whatever it is you have, that's what my soul's been longing for this whole time. That's why I go to church. And so we want to live like Jesus and the apostles and the early, early Christians and all those people who totally transformed their world, just turned it all upside down and just made it a place of God's kingdom in our world. There's, I'll just tell you one story. <clears throat> All right, losing my voice already. About um, this kind of faith, there is a man I want to introduce you to his name. Nobody knows him, and he changed our whole world about a generation ago. Does anybody remember uh, way back with solidarity with Lech Walesa and when Pope John Paul II went to Poland? And they totally transformed uh, that country uh, over there. They were, they were all rising up, and they wanted to change. Pope uh, John Paul came to Poland, and all the people gathered around. All the guns and stuff were pointed at them, and all the threats were pointed at them. And they, they had total non-resistance, no resistance at all. And when Pope uh, John Paul who was there, the people just all cried out, this big crowd, we want God. We want God. They just called out for God because of what was going on in that country. But what was going on was that they didn't use the weapons of this world. We see this going on with Russia and Ukraine. There's always going to be that in our world. Last time I preached this homily, I pulled it out And all the problems in the world were the same, except they were in Iraq. And there was election coming up right away, too, and we're all worried about that then. We thought the world was falling apart then. And so all that was going on, just like now it's it's something else. And so, uh, you know, they they didn't use the politics, the, the methods of the world, the tools of the world. They didn't use the weapons of this world, which are just violence and hatred and cruelty and injustice. We don't use those things. We don't use the politics of the world. We bring something into politics and into all the, 
all the things going on into our world. So this man's name is uh, Yersi uh, Papawishko. Yersi Papawishko. He's a Polish guy. He was in seminary, and in seminary, he was like uh, n- not a big deal. <laughs> He, you wouldn't expect anything of him. He was really mousy, you know, kind of quiet, kind of no one would ever expect anything of him. And uh, he's the one who led this whole revolution in Poland. We think it was Ronald Reagan who made the Soviet Union fall or John Paul II or something like that. But there's this little, quiet, mousy Polish priest who was assigned to Gdansk where all the commotion was going on, and he preached uh, the most fiery uh, homilies, and it was totally non-resistance. We're not going to use the ways of the world. We're going to overcome the world with our faith. We are not cowardly people. We're not afraid of anything going on out there. We are people of faith, which is, which is full of love and strength and wisdom, And so he would preach that kind of thing. And he said, don't get caught up in any of this stuff. And don't worry about the guns and don't fight back with guns. And he would preach and preach. And he changed that country. Uh, They saw that he was dangerous in his preaching. He was dangerous. This mousy, quiet, no leadership skills at all kind of a man. And uh, But he was filled with faith. He was filled with the kind of faith God wants you to be filled with. A faith that doesn't use the things of this world, but overcomes everything in our world with the gospel, with the good news. So they went, they went and they uh, kidnapped him, and they uh, beat him pretty good, and uh, finally they just threw him in the river and drowned him, and uh, they were praying for him, uh, hoping, you know, expecting the worst, but hoping and uh, they found his body, and it was him, this guy you've never heard of. We look at the leaders of our church and of our country and think they did it. It was someone just like you who had a faith that was not cowardly but powerful. You have that same faith to transform our world. We don't want to trade it in for the things of the world. We've already had the things of this world. We're tired of them. we got no taste for them. But this things of God, this God that's beyond all other, all other things this world has, uh, yeah, you are people of amazing power because you are people of an amazing faith. Remember Bishop Mingling, he always said to me when he met me, you know, Steve, do you still have faith? Right? Remember Bishop Mingling, that big cheerleader of a guy? Uh, And um, I would say, yeah, Bishop, more than ever. And he would say, good, because the church needs priests who have faith. And the church needs people who have faith. Not a lot of the other kind of faith, but even just a little of the kind of faith that knows God intimately and can change their world, like Jesus, like Yearsley Papawishko, like all these unknown people who have made our world uh, the kingdom of God. This is our faith. It's all about the kind of faith we have. Let's let go of everything and get to know that Jesus that John of the Cross met, that Thomas Aquinas met, that uh, Yearsley Papawishko knew, and let's change our world. Yeah, this is our faith. And what a wonderful faith we have.